Congratulations on purchasing a P6. Let's go through and figure out what's in the box. Now, when you first get your device, you'll have a thermally wrapped shrink wrap at which you'll cut open and you'll have two yellow straps that come around the top. You'll have to cut both of those off. Once complete with that, let's go ahead and operate these plastic clips. Now, in order to operate these clips, what you'll want to do, there's a line at the bottom here. You'll want to pinch and pull it open. Once this is done, you can then remove it from the box. Now we're going to do this for all four and we can be able to release the wheel from its packaging. Once you removed all four clips at the bottom and the straps, you then proceed to lift the box. At the top of the package, you'll see this box. Now this box is your fast charger. For those who purchase the batch, the pre-order, they'll get the quick charger. And for those that purchase after, you'll get a stock charger. So here you can see the packaging of the 3300 watt 14 amp fast charger. It comes with nice long cables so that you can have an easier time finding charge points. Let's put this aside. Also in the box, you'll have the manual. Now here you can read and figure out how to use your device as well as go through some of the settings. Now you can read this on your own time and I'm not gonna go through it today. Lastly, you're gonna receive some tools. Now in here, this tool is for the suspension adjustment. We have a screwdriver here to help you install these plates. Now these plates is for the dihedral adjustment. So if you feel that the angle of dihedral on the pedal is not enough, you can install these plates to have a little bit extra dihedral. And there are four screws in here as well for you to do that. Once you're done removing everything from the top of the package, we are now at the main event. So the beauty of this packaging is your P6. Now removing both sides of the foam, We'll release the wheel, and now you can remove the plastic. Now comes the fun part, lifting the wheel out of the box. Now before you throw this box to the side, if you look at the bottom, there are some power pads here. So make sure you take these out for installation on your wheel prior to your first ride. Now before you get too carried away with setting up your new wheel, make sure you keep the packaging in case you need to ship it for some after sales service. So what we're gonna do is put all the plastic wrap and the foam Throw the charger box back where it belongs. And let's put the over box on top. Now when bringing the box down, you'll notice that there's some lips here. Just make sure you clear both sides. And once successfully put on, we're gonna go and secure those clips again. So you'll see, so you'll see that there's this uh, V shape. So what you wanna do is squeeze them towards the center. Install them like this. And then and then what you want to do is squeeze down one at a time. There you go. And you're locking it back in place. So again, we're going to put it a clip in, squeeze down on the bottom side first, and then the top side, just like that. Now repeat this on all four sides until all your clips are back in place. And this will ensure that if you ever need after sales service, you'll be able to ship your wheel to the service center or to your nearest dealer. Perfect. Now once you have this all put back together, make sure you store this in a safe place 
in your garage or your attic so that's always nearby when needed. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to the main event. Now let's start getting your wheel ready to go. First and foremost, I like to peel all my stickers. So let's take the screw protector off. Ooh. Now the first time you turn on the wheel, you're gonna hold down this power button, this big orange one, and it might take a couple seconds. So hold it down until the screen turns on and you hear a beep. Now if you haven't downloaded the Emotion app, you can scan the QR code and it'll bring you to the app. Now if you're new to InMotion or you've never downloaded the app before, you can take your phone, scan the QR code, and it'll bring you to downloading the Motion app whether you're on the Apple iOS store or the Android Play store. Now after you download it, I already have it installed. Once you've downloaded the InMotion app, you can go ahead and select it. Now click on the top left to search for your vehicle. Here you'll see the P6, and if you select it, you'll hear the wheel beep to confirm that you've connected. The first screen you'll see is the activation screen. This activates it and sets you as the owner. So let's activate it now. And here it asks you to be the owner of the vehicle. So you can hit confirm. And now we are in. So now the wheel is out of transfer mode and it's activated and ready to ride. Now inside the accessory bag, as mentioned, you'll see these metal flat bars as well as the screws. Now these are to adjust the pedal dihedral, which is the angle of inclination towards the body. So we're gonna install the one side just so you can see the difference. So we're gonna grab two screws and the metal plate. And there's also this Allen key that's gonna help you install it. Once one screw is properly placed, we'll place the other screw before tightening everything down. Now on the right, or I guess your left side. So on the left side, I have installed the plate to adjust the dihedral. And on the right side, there is no plate installed. So therefore you can see the angle difference between both sides. Now, I want to stress that this is not a requirement. This is purely just for preference. So some people prefer more angle and some prefer less. So play with what feels comfortable to you. Yeah, this is an optional installation. So here on the left, you can see that the angle is much steeper by a couple degrees compared to the right side. Now this can cause comfort issues if you're not used to it, uh, but for those high performance riders that want to uh, lean the wheel further without scraping the pedal, this is something that they do adjust. Uh, again, I wanna stress it's purely a preference thing and it's not a requirement. Now before we put the power pads onto the side of the wheel, the power pads are included with your wheel. There you see this dog bone. So this dog bone is placed inside this crevice and then you'll wanna find the matching piece for the toe where the power pad looks something along those lines. Now let's assemble the second one. So again, you'll look for the InMotion logo, find your dog bone, insert it in the crevice and then add your toe part. So this is what it looks like from the backside. Now this allows you to have some adjustability in the angle that you want while you're setting up your power pads. So let's go ahead and put the power pads on. So this is the right, right side of your wheel. These power pads are typically placed in the braking and these ones are typically placed in the acceleration. So what you wanna do is to put your foot on where you find it most comfortable. So what you wanna do is put your foot right in the middle where it's most comfortable for you and then once you find that spot, the braking pad, there's two options. One, some people like to put it down low as a heel lock. Others like to put it a little higher for some calf activation on braking. So you can put it somewhere there just to be comfortable. The front pad, <clears throat> the main pieces are this toe part. So you wanna align the toe so that you have good grip on your foot 
and then you want to make sure this angle is based on your riding style, whether you want it to be more vertical or more leaned over. So, so depending on your preference, I like a little bit more lean, so this is how I'm going to do it. Now I, I see here that my foot has a bit of a gap, which this would <clears throat> provide some instability. So what you want to do is to replace it nice down low so there's no gap and then get that angle just right. Now before you go out for your first ride, let's go through and explain the rest of the features of this wheel. At the top here, we have the big orange power button, beside that, a light sensor. Now when it's dark, you can turn on or off the feature in order to have the headlight turn on automatically when it's dark. Now we have the big touchscreen and the trolley handle. Now this trolley handle locks both in the down position as well as the up position. So how to activate it is to press this button here and lift it up. Now in its up position, it is locked, so therefore you get a nice secure trolley handle. Now to release it, you're gonna do the same. You're gonna push the button in the middle and bring the handle back down. Lastly, at the rear of the wheel, we have the tail lights, turn signals, which can have adjustment, as well as the charge port on the left here, and the USB port C and A ports on the right. And then in the front of the wheel, we have the logo light, which can be adjusted, as well as the daytime running light and the headlight that can be turned on. So now let's go and look at the menu. Now here on the touchscreen, there's a couple different features. Firstly, there's the time at the top left, the 4G ride connect symbol on the top right. And here in the middle, you have your speed display and beneath that you have your battery meter. Now to the left and to the right, you'll see some numbers. If you press and hold, you'll be provided with a list of options that you can choose. So here we can do tire pressure, and on the left side, if we'd like, we can do top speed. Now down here, you see the lock button. You can look to our locking video in order to show you how to lock and unlock your wheel as well as set your pin code. And lastly, on the bottom right, we have the settings. So here in the settings, when you first get your wheel, it'll be limited to 25 kilometers per hour, and it'll start to beep once you hit 25 kilometers per hour. Set this as per your rider skill level. And the speed alarm is also the, just the beeper, so no tilt back. And then lastly, the pedal sensitivity is the softness in the pedals. Now, at 100%, the pedals will be very stiff and they'll stay mainly pretty flat. Whereas at 15%, it will start to have a bit of give to help you leverage the wheel and get more acceleration. Now, when we move over to light and sound, You'll see the DRL, which is the daytime running lights, which is the halo around the headlight. We can turn that on or off, as well as the beeper. So if you uh, have roommates or family members that you don't want to disturb when you bring your wheel into your house to turn it on and off, we can actually turn on and turn off the beep symbol. This beep will not turn off the safety alarms. It will only turn off the accessory beeps. And then we, here we have the auto light. So auto light utilizes this light sensor when it gets dark, you can automatically turn on and off your headlight based on the ambient light that's surrounding. And then lastly, we have the logo brightness. So we can choose to have it off or we can choose it to have as bright as we can. Now, when we go down to mode, you'll see there's a comfort and a sport mode. Now this just changes the responsiveness of the software. So the ride mode and comfort is a bit more easygoing and sport mode is much more responsive. Now, if you ever ship your wheel, or have to transport it, it is ideal to put into transport mode. What it does is it prevents the motor from spinning up, even if the wheel actually gets turned on during its transportation. Now we go to balance. In the balance angle, you'll be able to set if you prefer your wheel to be slightly forward tilted or reverse tilted. You can use the plus and minus signs to adjust as needed. Under vehicle calibration, if you ever feel the need to calibrate because the pedals start doing weird things, what you'll want to do is to double tap the power button to put it into lift mode where the motor is deactivated. Make the wheel as upright as you can 
and then hit start to calibrate. If you try to start to calibrate now, it will not work because it's on the kickstand. The wheel needs to be fully upright for the calibration to work. Lastly, we have the other parameters, which allows you to turn on and off your screen automatically, set between metric and imperial, as well as your language between English and Chinese. And then lastly is just the about screen, which shows your version, num version numbers uh, for all the different pieces of the wheel and your serial number. And that's a quick guide to how to set up your wheel. Now, once you've fully set up all your parameters, you can then hit the road and start riding your new wheel.